I'm pleased to sponsor the alternative interview. In that summer, you did sign another striker and uh, spent eight thousand pounds on a on a thirty three year old, and a lot of people were uh, questioning whether this was going to be a good buy or not. His name was Gary Abbott, and in one hundred and fifty six games under your management, he scored one hundred and twenty goals. Best. You, you were proved right. Yes. The best. <laughs> Gary was pure class and quality. There's, there's no other way to describe that man. That's why I made him assistant with me at uh, Braintree when I, I got the job at Braintree. Uh, Gary's an uh, unbelievable man. Unbelievable. And his football talent spoke for itself. And without him in the team, we wouldn't have achieved half of what we did. That's for sure. And... Your second season, 98-99, was a, was a special season. Finished seventh in, in the league, so first season into the Premier League. It's a decent return. You scored 83 goals in the league. You, scored, you played 65 games in total with all the cup competitions and everything. And at that time as well, we've got Gary in. You've also got other players in, including players like Owen Cole, Ian Hathaway, you talked about a minute ago, and, and Colin Fielder as well, who became, came on to your coaching staff later on. Um, but a bit of experience there as well, a bit of solidity with Owen there at the back, and yeah. Ian had been around in the Football League, and he was a huge part for you, wasn't he, Ian Hathaway, and, and in terms of the, the, the relationship with, with, with Gary Abbott as well? Yeah, Gary's Gary Abbott's relationship was second to none. Ian was the funniest man I've ever met in football. He was hard because every time you go past a, a cake shop, he'd want to go and buy four donuts. And I had to keep his weight down, which is why we ended up going to the FA because I said, no, you need to lose a stone or I wasn't going to pay you. And then, you know, we got on great from that day. I still remember that beautiful cross in the last minute at uh, Southampton <clears throat> against Paisley Stoke and Gary Abbott Bosch, 1-0 and we won the cup. That's, that's that quality you wait for. And again, Ian, you know, I spoke to for many a years. It's only been the last few years where we haven't really spoken to each other. But a lovely man. Great, great guy to work for. Great guy to work with, rather. And another striker you had there for, for a while as well, Joe Narty. And he um, he had that spell, didn't he, when he scored goals for fun. He scored five and an 8-0 win at Bishop Stortford, um, when he played at Boreham Wood. And there was, you know, I think he got swayed a little bit, thinking his career was going to go higher, and obviously it never did. And uh, but did he have something about him that could have progressed further? 
He could have done, Graham, but I think at, at our level of football, it's very difficult when, you know, the pressure's on him as a goal scorer. And he, you know, you talk about chalk and cheese with, with Gary Abbott. Um, Joe, when he, when he was Dan, his, his old game and everything else went to pot. And he was, what, 24 years old at that time. So, you know, you have to dust yourself down if you're not scoring goals like Gary Abbott does. And, and, and contribute more to the, to your team rather than just scoring. And that's the difference between a goal scorer and a prolific goal scorer and a player with natural ability that Gary had to have. And Joe, I think, reached his peak at that level of football. Uh, there's another game I can remember. Um, made a note of it here. Played Bromley away with a Tuesday night. Gary Abbott got sent off banged the door in, so he damaged the door and that, so we ended up having to pay for that. And then you followed him down the tunnel a little bit afterwards, you'd had a, a row with the referee, and you'd gone as well, so you probably had to go past the door that he'd already broken as you're, uh, <laughs> as you're in the <laughs> Oh, crikey. Yeah. And I think when, when Gary walked through and I heard, bang! You know, because I like to try and make sure my players are together and... <laughs> And then I had a guard of referee and I've done exactly the same. <laughs> Gary <laughs> turned around to me and went, I've just done that. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, we're passionate. We, we want it all. <laughs> Great. And you reached the, um, got to the fourth round qualifying of the FA Cup and Drew Woken at home. I can remember it was a, a draw that was made on a Sunday and we spoke on the phone and Woken at home was, Aldershot Woken has become a, a, a big local derby over the years since both teams were in the in the conference national league whatever but that was the first time we ever played them yeah in uh, 1998 there was nearly 7,000 people at the game if you recall it was mm -hmm. uh, the biggest highest Saturday crowd at Aldershot for 20 years and you didn't have a good relationship with the Woking fans and I think that stemmed from your, your time at Enfield didn't it because they had a bit of a, a bit of a rivalry in those days as well yeah they were under Jeff Chappell um we had them in a the semi-final with the FA Trophy on two consecutive years and that they managed to, to scrape through. But they were just crafty and I didn't like that about them, you know. Every time we played them, we had a man sent off and it was just ridiculous for those sending offs. And they just was all around the referee. Yeah, he's got to go, go, go. One word comes to, to thing, a, a, a bit of cheating, I would say, because we were the better side on both those occasions. But they ended up going to Wembley, which is a dream come true for every non-league player and manager and staff. And uh, we were, we were robbed a couple of times. And, and I think I, like I've done all my career, I let my feelings show and I told them where it was. And since that day, uh, whenever the job comes up at Woking, I never put my CV in because I know it's going to go straight in the bin. So um, I'll leave it at that. Mate. <laughs> um, let's talk about what, there's a couple of things I want to talk about towards the end of that season. One's a, a, a serious one because we lost Mary Sweet, who was a dear friend of yours. Yeah. You built up a great relationship with Mary and all her friends. And um, there was a lot of sincerity in that as well, wasn't there? You, you had a real bond with her. And it was a horrible night at Slough when um, you know she, she, she collapsed there and taken to the hospital and sadly lost her the next day. But a, a horrible period at, at that time. It was, I think, um, obviously, when you lose your own mum, Graham, and, you know, and then you meet a, a, a 75-year-old lady who supports Aldershot Town, who is similar in character to your mum, and you look at it, and you got, I got just a soft sock for her. I used to make sure she had a blanket and everything in the winter, because she'd come to every game. And that took us all back, to be honest with you, Graham, that, that took the stuffing out of us and the players, because we... we we built this bond with, you know, our supporters and our elder supporters and, you know, and, and yeah, it was a, a really sad afternoon at that so. And ironically, the, the, the following month, you've got to the two cup finals. We'll talk about one of those cup semi-finals first because we played Bromley and you'll remember the debacle because we couldn't get a goalkeeper because we had all these goalkeepers registered, <laughs> but, but we... we, we we couldn't find out where they were, and 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 yeah. I think one was in America or whatever. And the Eastman League said, "Well, tough. You've got these yeah. goalkeepers, so you're going to have to play one of them." So we ended up Paul Pretty had to play, and he was 
45 years old and he hadn't played for about 10 years. And, and it was remarkable, really, from Paul, because I think he, he had a, um, a serious injury when, it, when he had to retire from football about 10 years before. And then he came out of retirement for that game. And, uh, and he did well. We got to the final and it was a remarkable night. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, the, the, the cup final against. Um, we had the semi final, Bromley. Bromley was yeah. the semi final before. And then we had Boreham Wood at home. Uh, Boreham Wood at. Um, in final, correct. In the yeah. final, yeah. Um, yeah, that. And, and we won that. Well, they got back, didn't they? And we managed to nick a goal at late because I think we yeah. won the first leg to. Well, they won. Yeah. Or we won, we won the first it. leg 2 0. And then they got back to 2 all. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, we managed to score the winner to make it 3 2 and go to the final. Priz was great. But for me, he's a goalkeeper. You know, I ain't asking him to play up front. I don't care whether he's 55, he was still played. And that uh, shows you the character of people that I'm used to work with, not big babies. I can't play and go, ah, I've got a bruise on my big toe. I'm not playing tonight. He went, oh, I'll give it my best shot. And we'd done the training session and we protected him. Don't come off your line. Don't go into false positions. And would you believe it? The first two minutes, he's out like um, bleeding Ray Clements. Yeah, keeper! You know, care bridge, stay in goal. But yeah, he, he saved us and got us through to the final and we managed to win that 1-0 on the Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon. I think it was Bank Holiday Monday. And then, um, yeah, we that was our first cup because then we had the second cup on a Wednesday. That's right. So yeah, Gary Abbott scored two goals against Boreham Wood. And then I think it's the, 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 the game at Southampton that everyone remembers and everyone still talks about it now. It was one of the... One of those unique occasions. Neil Champion was sent off after half an hour. So you play in an hour of the game with uh, with ten men. Ten men. Yeah. And I, I got worried at one stage watching it because I, I can remember when he got sent off, and I thought at one stage you were you were telling all your players to go, and then off, off you go, and then and we're not carrying on. But it wasn't that okay. case. But there was a lot of emotion out there at the time, wasn't there, when he got sent off? To be honest with you, Graham, I can't remember the guy's name, and it's not like me. But I've always tried to look at the players that my team's going to play against and what type of player they are. <clears throat> and the guy that was marking Neil Champion had already broken two players' legs that season, as you well know. Um, and he was he was known for going over the top. And I taught all week Neil Champion, delay your tackle, see where his leg is, and then you go through. I said, it takes two seconds. Just... Go, stop, go. And he took it to a tee. Had Neil Champion not done that, Neil Champion would have ended up with a broken leg. Unfortunately for the other player, he got his comeuppance. And I'm not an evil, wicked person. He deserves what he's done to players all his career. And I think that was a downer for me when we all started at Aldershot having a blanket collection for him. What about the blanket collections for the two players that broke, he broke their leg? You know, and one was an 18-year-old kid. So I don't forget things like that. And I said to Neil Champion, that's why I said to the referee, he's just a Mickey Mouse, we'll get on with it. And, and you know, like you said, for an hour to play with 10 men and score in the 89th minute and win the cup. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> amazing. Took uh, my foot off the, the gas with, with Grant. He was a good goal scorer. But I never looked into the injury that he had. Had I known he had that injury, I wouldn't have signed him. It's a funny story, so it's got to be told. It's got, it's got just got to be told. And uh, you know, this player played hard to get. He, he thought he was going to be um, 
hanging around, but you, you got the better of this one. 